Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict, hitting you with another video here. And since it's June 4th, from the time that I posted this, we're going to go ahead and look at a 64 Lincoln Continental. This one happens to be a convertible. And um, if you've been following our page, I know other pages do it as well. Uh, Lincoln Addict, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you'll know that depending on the day, like June 1st, June 2nd, June 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, so on and so forth, we we will typically go back and kind of share um, you know, that year car. It's just a little thing that we do kind of in social media. Uh, so, you know, on June 2nd, sharing 62s, so on and so forth. But um, just a fun thing to do. But being that it's June 4th, I'm going to go ahead and drop this one, 1964, as I mentioned, uh, Continental Convertible. And this one sold, if you're looking here at the screen, on Bring a Trailer, which is a site I've been reviewing listing ads lately. And you'll see, believe it or not, it sold for $64,000. Uh, so kind of a nice tie into the numbers there back about four months ago. So just over four months ago on January 30th of 2022. I took a quick look at this car um, here before I started this. And um, let's just jump into how nice of a car really it, it does appear. You'll see 47,000 miles shown. And it talks about blue vinyl upholstery. So that would indicate that it's been redone more than likely. Uh, AM radio, locking glove box, you know, kind of all the standard stuff here. Uh, this kind of talks about a little bit of the information that you tend to see. Oftentimes, they always talk about the rear hinged doors, also known as suicide doors, coach doors, right? This one is interesting because it has a Panasonic, they say, touchscreen cassette player. So it kind of reinforces where you'll see that it's at. It's kind of an old school uh, radio. So I I'm assuming this one's been maybe with the same owner for a while. Um before this current owner because it says the car is said to have resided with its prior owner for over two decades, kind of tying in what I just said, before it was acquired by the selling dealer just um, you know half a year ago or so. It's now offered in Florida with transferable New York registration. Uh, there is a video linked, and I could tell from the video that's on YouTube that you know they were in Florida. So from the front three-quarter shot here, in the rear three-quarter shot here, this does look like a nice car. We can zoom in here some a little bit and kind of see, does this look, you know, right? And it's hard to tell with this photo, but um, it, it does look pretty nice. A lot of times they'll copy and paste some of this information. It talks about Elwood Engel uh, designed, you know, and they kind of talk about which is which is correct information. A lot of times this is kind of just, you know, copy and paste it or, or they'll pay someone to put together this roll solid listing. And as we've established, really the presentation is the most important thing and being forthcoming, of course, with the information. The Huron Blue, this is the same color as my 64 Lincoln. This one actually looks nicer than my 64. It does mention that it was repainted about 25 years ago, reinforcing that it was kind of a respray. You know, we don't know. We'd have to look at photos to see how nice a paint. But from here, this side shot, it, it looks nice. It talks about some of the other features here. The power antenna does not work. I think my, uh, mine's not working either on my car. Uh, usually kind of an easy fix, my understanding. And the paint blemishes where on the soft top can be seen in the gallery below. So, uh, this interior looks really good. Um, they talked about being redone, and you'll kind of see, and it's ironic because I have a blue 64, and some of the color differences in here that you'll see, they are subtle, but it makes me wonder like if, if things weren't matched perfectly. And hey, that happens, you know, let's be honest. But um, I can tell you from what I'm seeing with the interior, it does look good. The cabin said to have been have re, uh, been refurbished and features front and rear bench seats. Of course, uh, that's typical. You know, you typically won't see the bucket seats. Although '64 was the first year, technically, my understanding that they were available. 
It goes into some of the other information here. The dealer notes the carpet has been replaced and the window sticker or switches function intermittently, which again, this is something that oftentimes has to be re, the switches have to be rebuilt or you can replace them. Replacing them can be easy, but it can be a pain as well. Um, some of them are plug and play. Some of them you have to solder or, um, you know, butt connect together. Uh, the crack in the dashboard is visible in the gallery. So again, forthcoming with the information. They mentioned the 47,000 miles again. Here we can see they got the AC compressor, so we know it's an AC car. It looks like the original style radiator hose. And we can see here this is the good three-port um, uh, fuel pump. Uh, they do. They did add here. This this is not factory, but you'll often see this on old cars where they'll add in. Um, these actually come, I believe, with Edelbrock carburetors. Uh, but you know, even if it has the Carter carb, you will see this little glass and extra filter. So um, you know, there's th this is oftentimes kind of like a second filter that some people will, will add. Um, if you look at a uh, Mel or MEL 430, uh, you'll see the fuel filter up in this area. This might just be the only one they have. This is cool because it does allow for you to see if, if there's fuel coming in. If you're ever working on an old car or trying to get something started, this kind of gives you indication that that the fuel pump uh, rod is is doing its uh, its job and it's pumping fuel up here. Okay, uh, they talk about some of the, the key information, 320 horsepower, yada, yada, yada. Uh, battery, spark plugs, ignition coil, and coil ground wire were replaced. Portions of the hood insulation are missing, which we will see. Uh, underneath here looks pretty standard. Nothing looks really rusty or anything. This oil pan does look like it doesn't have paint on it. It has the surface rust. That would indicate to me that at some point maybe it was taken off or... I haven't really ever seen one that's been sandblasted and then put back on without being painted or powder coated. Um, I guess it's possible, depending on where the car was at, that you know all the paint is just gone. But um, that is a little odd. Uh, here is the the DSO, so we'll look at that in a second. I have seen more cars that do not have a DSO, so that leads me to believe that some of these were blank. Uh, of course, this 53, you'll see is Oakland, California sales district, which is a good thing. Again, that kind of reinforces that it was a California car. Now, how long did it spend its time there? We don't know. It depends on maybe paperwork and things like that. So we got the reinforcement of some of the information here, which is standard. Um, this video, I'm going to uh, turn down the volume, but look, you got a good thumbnail. And this is kind of telling me that it's on YouTube. And what we can do is we can click right here and it's going to open up and we see it's 14 and a half, almost 15 minutes or so. And it's embedded right here. So it's super simple. I watched or I scanned through this video and they did a really, really, really good job. Kind of a long intro here. Um, the guy does a walk around, which I think is good. And he talks about um, – just information with, with about the car. I didn't watch every second of it, but I thought he did a good job. He kind of shows up close, shows the suicide doors. Um, here you can kind of see the difference in some of the coloring there. And again, mine is the same way. Um, so I'm not, you know, taking anything away on there, but you know, if you were, if you were wanting to redo the entire interior to have it perfectly match, you know, you could always do that. This, uh, I like this part. He actually talks about the date codes on the tires. I think they were like from 2002 or 2005. So he said they're starting to show their age again, being a very fourth uh, upfront, um, you know, individual who's presenting this car. Uh, he does talk about uh, right after this point, the blemishes. Now, um, in the description, it does mention that um, the seller talked about how they sometimes have to move the steering, um, the, the, the shift indicator up and down a little bit. And that's part of the issue with the steering column needing to be rebuilt. And sometimes getting it perfectly, you have to kind of wiggle it a little bit because it needs the neutral safety switch needs to be engaged to go, hey, the car's in neutral. But when he talks about these little blemishes here at first, my ears kind of perked up. A lot of times, if you see the dent back here, that's an indication that at some point the car had slipped into reverse. 
this car does not have that dent, okay? When I watched it a second ago, they do look like just literally blemishes, okay? The reason why I, I mentioned to always look for that dent is, again, it gives indication that the car did hop into reverse. We've talked about that. Steering columns have to be rebuilt. But the key thing is that, like, when my 64, when I started driving it and, and Tony and I went through and did a bunch of stuff to it, I had a, a temporary bumper on the car because I, I was um, waiting for some parts to come from the seller uh, that I bought it from. And I was going to get the bumper rechromed. Well, the bumper that I had on the car, the temp one, when it had this big ding back here, you could see the bu the bumper was like it, it, it was weird on my car, okay? And it's because the car jumped in and probably hit like a wall or something and really damaged it. This one, again, does not show that. But the reason why I'm saying that is John Lyman from Stinkin' Lincoln, uh, Chris Dunn, all these guys would tell you, always look to kind of see if there's that ding back here. If it was hit really hard, then obviously the bumper may not look um, as, as nice as it should. Okay, and I wish I could kind of throw maybe I'll try to throw a photo in here if I don't forget uh, to show the way my car looked for a while. And it was just a temporary bumper um, They he kind of just talks about the interior shows inside the glove box, one of the little manuals there. And then here you go. So in this 15 minute video, um, they're doing the walk around. They're showing the top working and they're showing the windows working. I don't recall if they showed the auto drops working. A lot of times, um, guys that are, are, you know, said individuals that may not know a lot about these cars, they don't realize that, there, that there's an auto drop feature. So here you could see where he opens the door and the window didn't drop and then he messes with the window switch. Um, that's part of the intermittent challenge that they were talking about. So, um, I would say, based upon what I just saw, now he didn't open this side uh, rear door, but that looks like the auto drop feature that drops that window three or so inches, so that you know you can easily open the door. And when you close it, it goes back up and seals good. That doesn't appear to be working, and again, that could be costly. Uh, here again, they continue with the switch, and they're showing the deck lid coming open, the flapper going up. Uh, now the locks are going to um, come undone from the top. Once those are undone, then the top's going to start retracting into the trunk. That's basically what you're seeing. This is a good thing. Again, um, they speed it up a little bit, which is fantastic, right? Because it takes, I think John Cashman used to say it takes about a minute um, from beginning to end for it to go do its cycle maybe a little bit longer. But that works good. You get a chance to see how nice the car is. Um, with the top down and I'm a huge fan of blue Lincolns. I look at this one and say, you know, if I was looking for one, I might, might've went and bought this one. He monkeys around a little bit more here and you can see the old school tape player. I love this. Um, it, it kind of shows that more than likely, you know, this was done back in, in the eighties and it's just, you know, it hasn't been uh, messed with too much. Uh, it's pretty odd. I've never seen a tape player that size um, in the ashtray area, uh, a lot of guys now just have their little Bluetooth things in there or whatnot, but um, that's a first for me. I'm going to be totally honest with you. He does show the gauges working. He gets in the car, talks about the seatbelts. Of course, these are not correct. These are GM style seatbelts because I grew up riding a GM. Um, I don't know if he talks about if he's saying that, but what's odd is if you go back here to when they first get in the car you see this right here this is a seat belt so i don't know at some point if like this when the interior was taken out did they lose the other side not these guys but whoever was doing um this is the seat belt so i guess this latches into that but of course that doesn't match and it's gm and it, that just that i don't know it is is ocd as i am i, I couldn't live with those with those seat belts uh, and I could live with some things, but I don't know. I, I'm not that. He drives the car. He kind of, um, I could tell here the way these highways are that this was Florida. And he talks about, you know, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, finish this up. Uh, he, you know, they, they seem to present it pretty well, which I really, really like. If you've been watching these videos, you know, that's the key thing. And what we'll do is we'll kind of just scan through these since we do know that it already sold. Love seeing the photos with the top up, kind of just showing different uh, parts of 
the cycle being a fan of this blue i mean uh, this is one of my favorite colors so uh you're never going to steer me away from maybe wanting to buy one of these you see the hubcaps are there those do tend to fly off that's a whole nother video we could talk about but it's good that they are there the paint really really looks good you typically are always going to see the little bit of dirt in here and you can kind of see um looks like a little cracking and stuff and again that's probably the age i mean if it was painted 25 years ago i mean that's back in 97 so mid 90s here you can see just like in my personal car um you can see a little bit of the difference in like how nice the paint looks but the interior is kind of like eh. um i love this i would just leave it this way other than these seat belts but um you could just tell that little bit of a color difference and if you can live with that hey no big deal you could see in these um, billet insert or these inserts, which I actually sell remanufactured ones of these with these sticker patterns. But you could see here there's dents and dings, and that's normal. I mean, you'll see that a lot of times it was someone maybe trying to take these off with a screwdriver, or if they're dented in like this, who knows what someone was trying to do. It's possible that this is just some sort of adhesive and this could be cleaned up. But I'll tell you what, this bumper looks good in this. Um, trim piece that's on the deck lid 64 only wow it looks great good presentation overall a little bit of bubbling kind of showing kind of pointing out you know there are some some you know some imperfections you know door handles uh you know the i mean these look just like mine i mean you know you could re-chrome all that stuff if you want uh dent in the peak molding there's the top kind of showing it's not perfect. Hell, most of the time you're going to have the top up, or excuse me, top down, and the top's only going to go up if it's raining. So I don't get too crazy on that stuff. This all looks pretty good. Um, the way this trim is on here, you know, sometimes you will – I've seen it like this where there's kind of that screw. I, I don't think that that's an issue. I just think that that's the way it is sometimes. Um, the door here, all this looks good overall. It doesn't look like it's hiding anything there in the dog leg. You can see some of the imperfections here. Um, I mean, I like a car like this. You know, I like a car that's that's not perfect because you can get in and drive it, wax it up, clean it up, you know, do your thing. And you get a little bit of a um, – there's this front seat belt. And this does not look – so maybe they did at some point. I don't know. Maybe they added these seat belts. Um, at first, I thought that, you know, that, that looked factory. So a lot of photos, these kind of show a little bit of indication under the doors to see um, uh, how things look there, which I'm always a proponent of that. This little cover is sometimes missing for the fuses. That's there. Glove box is cleaned out. He mentions in the video that the clock works. Uh, a lot of times these bulbs um, will have to be changed. And I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of these cars and I've rarely seen a crack here. I mean, this dash looks really nice. Uh, in these 64s, man, that's, that, that's killer. Uh, because, you know, the dash, this one is so nice. I can't believe it has that crack, but it does happen. You can see here, if I was looking at this in person, I would want to make sure there's nothing like hidden here. But from what I can see visually, this looks good. Uh, the molding obviously isn't perfect. You would imagine that, you know, some of these things were never done uh, or the originals were put back on. And that would indicate that, you know, at some point that you're going to probably want to, um, you know, upgrade to steel rubber. Up close and the carpet mats, obviously they're not, you know, they're not correct. Um, I, I probably wouldn't leave those in there. The carpet also does not look correct. Uh, and they mentioned the carpet had been changed. But again, if you're just looking for a driver to get in and roll, uh, I'm sure this car would, would suffice. This reminds me of something from my parents' house in the 80s, um, which we had carpet like that. Uh, the trunk looks good. You've got the landing pads here for the top. Um, underneath the deck lid, there is some rust, which we've talked about in other videos. That's pretty standard. The... Upper back panel switch, which now I have clicked out of. We're getting towards the end. Um, I could tell you it doesn't look like it's been upgraded. 
which is that switch that I always talk about here. Um, you know, typically this is going to run you. It depends what you need, but with a bigger motor and things like that, and in this hockey puck and it, the billet housing, you know, you could spend anywhere from five hundred to a thousand, I think, to, to upgrade that. But if it's working, if it's broke, don't fix it. That's my opinion. So, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You can see the original master cylinder here, which that would, in my opinion, should be upgraded. You can see it there. This is a single, and again, the, the bad part of that is if this goes out, then you don't have brakes. If you have, like most cars, a dual master cylinder, hypothetically, if one side of it goes out, you still have some stopping power. Uh, typically, in these cars, they're... Um, uh, the man this is the manifold it's kind of a weird upside down photo uh it really could be flipped but the this manifold uh they do tend to leak here and it causes like a really annoying a sound uh, a really annoying a sound or a really annoying sound and um if i can say that right and oftentimes these have to be changed i didn't listen in the video to if i heard it but these cars are typically ultra quiet and if you hear something there that's an indication that you need to change those gaskets uh, here, I looked at these before I started the video, and you know there is some darker spots in here. It's hard to tell if someone did come in here and spray anything, um, you know, or I mean, I don't, I don't understand why some of these areas are so dark. Um, but from what I could see in the photos and what you're seeing here, it doesn't look too too bad. I just don't know if somebody got in here and did anything with 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 spray bombing, but I don't see any rust. I don't see anything that would make me indicate like, hey, something's weird. I've seen before where the uh, it happened to my sixty four where the rams and the cylinders had to be replaced and it was leaking the fluid for the top in underneath the back seat. Uh, but again, this this just looks pretty non-dry so i would want to kind of know you know what are they doing here but nothing that i'm seeing indicates to me that anything's been replaced um so i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i'm just giving you guys a couple of things to think about so i think that's it 64 lincoln continental convertible on june 4th also known as six four day and 37 comments sixty four thousand. ironically enough and if we go down to the comments, which I like to read here, um, enjoyable story, interesting how little apparent interest there is in these iconic cars. I've seen people say that before. A few other comments. You guys can check them out. But um, thanks for all the support. Um, don't forget you can follow us in uh, social media uh, you, on Instagram, Facebook. Of course, here you're on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for the support. Take care. ODB, the Lincoln Addict, we out of here. Peace.